Well, um, yeah, I think if you rewind a little bit, the first the first major point in all this is that last year when they traded for Bradford, um, if Chip Kelly was a little better uh, equipped to handle NFL deal making, for example, um, I think they would have made the trade um, dependent on working out a new contract for Bradford. Um, the Eagles have done that in the past when they traded for uh, Hugh Douglas from the Jets. Um, you know, back in '98, uh, I guess it was. Um, you know, the trade was made and agreed to, but uh, it didn't go through until the Eagles worked out contract extension with Hugh Douglas. And then when they uh, got Jason Peters from Buffalo a few years ago, same thing. Uh, they worked out the trade with Buffalo, but uh, the deal was only finalized when he did um, the contract extension with the player. So uh, when Chip Kelly said at the end of the season that they never would have made the trade, uh, expecting Sam Bradford to play here for one year. The trouble is he didn't follow through on that when he actually made the trade, and he let the situation arise where they had Bradford for one year. Um, he played just well enough for us all to kind of think, well, maybe maybe he could be the guy. And now uh, they have no uh, you know um, no uh, long term deal with him, nothing in place. And uh, you know Bradford didn't want to do a deal at the beginning of the season. Uh, that makes sense. His agent looked at it and said, you know, if he plays well, um, you know his value is only going to go up on the free agent market. And if he doesn't play that well or he gets hurt again, um, you know, it's just not going to be a good situation no matter what they do with the with the contract at that point. So there was no no benefit for them to do the contract then. And uh, by getting through the, knee, uh, the season without a knee injury and uh, playing fairly well, Bradford put himself, you know, pretty much at the top of the free agent class as far as quarterbacks go. So um, it was a mistake uh, that Kelly made last year. Uh, the only way to undo it to me is to use the tag. Uh, you can always um, – Use the tag now, and if you get through free agency in the draft and something better, in your view, if you're, if you're the Eagles, comes along, you can take the tag off of them and let them become a free agent. Um, they've done that in the past as well. So I don't see any downside to using the tag now to try to get Bradford at least motivated uh, to work out a long-term contract with them. Phil, isn't it also, you know, I see what Washington um, is kind of breaking off talks with Cousins. It doesn't seem like they want to go long-term. Could that be because – the tag is a way that you can gain more information on him being like, Hey, you had a good year. We'll pay you for the good year you had, but we don't want to commit long-term because you need to prove it to us again. Bradford in a similar situation. We like what you did in the second half, but you need to prove it to us again. We're willing to pay you for one big year, but we don't want to go long-term with you. Yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, you know, Washington is looking at a situation with cousins where, you know, they'd like to get him on a, on a long term, long term but reasonable contract, and uh, you know the way the league is right now, quarterbacks get a ton of money, so you have to commit a lot of money to them. And uh, yeah, if you're not 100 percent sure about a guy, that's hard to do. You know, the, he was kind of running that with Foles uh, two years ago, um, and really they they were lucky because was, if his contract had been, you know, coming up at the end of that year, they would have been in the same spot that uh, the Redskins have gotten into with Cousins, where. He's about to become a free agent, and you know you either have to get a deal, you know, a long-term market value contract, or use a, use a tag or something like that. He was got lucky in that sense because Foles, um, you know, did not have the great year uh, in his second year, and by the end of his third year, when this would have been an issue, um, they kind of knew he probably wasn't the guy that they wanted to commit to long-term. So, um, yeah, it's tough because you know the numbers are getting so ridiculous for quarterbacks, and you know, salary caps going up every year, and uh, it's just it's just so much money that you know it can handicap your team for some time if you don't uh, you know it doesn't work out if you sign the wrong guy you're basically in a big trouble uh, down the line. Now a lot of teams have been doing deals the last couple of years. I think uh, Colin Kaepernick was a good example. And even Russell, Russell Wilson's new deal. Um, they they structure these contracts so that uh, you know, there's a lot of money and the player gets um, you know financial security and and is in a good place in that regard, but the team was able to get out of the contract after two or three years without any major uh, salary cap damage. That's becoming the trend around the league. Um, I would think that if Bradford uh, and his agent, uh, who is Tom Condon, is a very good agent and uh, very, very experienced agent, I would think that if they were looking to, you know, maximize his immediate earnings, they could do something like that with him. It wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be a situation where they had to have him for five years without any, any way to get out of it. But they, it would be two years at least probably that you'd be uh, pretty committed to Bradford. And that's not a terrible thing. I mean, you know, there's some debate about how well he played last year. You know, I read different people, different viewpoints and hear things on the radio, and 
talk shows and uh, just in general. And, you know, I mean, he wasn't great, but you know, the first half of the season, he was not as good. Uh, he got better. If he'd gotten worse, I'd be concerned, but he got better as his knee got healthier and he was more comfortable with it. As he got to know his teammates better, he got to understand the offense better. I mean, all the trends were pointing in the right direction. And that, to me, is about all you have to go on here. Uh, the guy has been in the league a while. Uh, you know, Jeff Lurie said last year Peyton Manning was the uh, the last quarterback they, they had rated as high as they had Bradford rated when he came out in 2010. So, um, you know, people universally thought he was going to be a good quarterback. And he has shown enough signs of that that and I don't know how you can just let him walk away without a better plan in place. Uh, Sam Bradford obviously uh, would be the guy that they could tag. That date is uh, March the 1st. Um, March 9th is when he would become a free agent if they don't get a deal done. If the Eagles do not tag Bradford, what are some of their other options? And, and to you, Phil, do you think that Bradford is far and away the best option between draft and free agency? Yeah, I really do. Um, you know, I don't think Cousins are going to be going anywhere. I mean, if they, you know, if they're in a situation where they're not you know, talking right this minute with the Redskins, I imagine that that'll get, you know, that process will get underway or they'll use the tag, whatever they have to do. I don't imagine that Sam, uh, that, I'm sorry, that uh, Kirk Cousins is going to go anywhere. Um, well, certainly not to the NFC East uh, rival. So other than him, you know, there's Brock Osweiler and people like that, but I don't know. The, 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 the guy that keeps coming up is Chase Daniel, the backup from Kansas City, because Peterson has worked with him and he's familiar with him. But Chase Daniel is six feet tall. He's four, four inches shorter than Bradford. Um, he's a guy that has started exactly two uh, football games in six years in the NFL. Um, you know, it's just not a guy that has, has gone anywhere and shown that he can be a starter. I mean, he's been with the Saints for three years and Kansas City with, for three years. I wasn't going to, you know, beat out Drew Brees probably, but Alex Smith for three years. I mean, that's not, a, you know, I'm just not thinking Chase Daniel is, is a world beater. Uh, you know, it seems attractive because he's somebody else. He's not the guy that you're used to, to seeing. But I imagine if Chase Daniel gets here, you'll see all his flaws the same way you've seen all of Sam Bradford's flaws and Nick Foles' flaws and Donovan McNabb's flaws, for that matter. So, you know, I don't think there's a ton of uh, free agent uh, possibilities that are going to be worth uh, the money and the time. And then when you get to the draft, you know, the 13th pick in the first round, the Eagles may get the third quarterback taken in a quarterback week draft. And, uh, you know, that could be Paxton Lynch, the, the, the guy from Memphis, um, who Temple beat, by the way. <laughs> um, not exactly the guy who went out and, and – uh, uh, really lit it up against Temple, for example, but you know, that's just one game. But you know, if you get the third best quarterback in a weak quarterback class, I'm not sure that's a, a real upgrade from Sam Bradford. Phil Sheridan, ESPN.com, NFL Nation here. How much, Phil, you look at what Denver did with Manning, very mediocre, maybe poor, with that defense? The Eagles putting a lot of attention on defense, making the change, just having a guy who's, you know, Good, you know, not a great player, not elite, but just a good player. How much does that defensive way that teams, uh, you know, had some success this year factor into the decision making process? Do you think that that should be something they consider saying, look, you bring Bradford back, he's a good player, and we have much better defense? I got to assume they're anticipating better play from their defense now with Chip Kelly and that offense out of here. Yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a two part thing, and you need, uh, you know, in the NFL, increasingly, you need to have a strong defense, and they haven't had one in Philadelphia, obviously, for the last couple of years. Um, but you still have to have the quarterback. I mean, I think they go hand in hand. You know, Pey- Peyton Manning did not, you know, play great this past year. He's he's obviously, you know, pretty much done career-wise. But he's still a guy that people respect and kind of fear, and he can still beat you in some ways. And having that aspect is why they won the Super Bowl. I mean, they had that. He didn't really have to be a great player in the Super Bowl because the defense was so good that day. But, you know, getting to the Super Bowl and winning games like that, winning playoff games, quarterback is going to, you know, do some big percentage of that for you. So it's still a very important position, the most single, uh, the most important single position on the field. But um, I do think there is a balance coming back into the league where when you saw the Super Bowl and, you know, Carolina's defense was outstanding, and uh, but they also have a franchise quarterback. I mean, that's, that's what you need to do. Um, the Eagles have not had a franchise quarterback quarterback since Donovan McNabb really not a not a not a guy you could really 100% say was I mean Michael Vick had been one early in his career I'm not sure here he was one in Philadelphia um they haven't had that and the defense has gotten progressively worse for the last five years too so 
you know, having neither of those options in place is, uh, has not been a winning formula in Philadelphia. So I think you still need both. Um, but, you know, the immediate, immediate issue is what do you do about this quarterback, which is Bradford. And, again, if you can get better than Bradford, then okay, it's fine. Go ahead and move on. But you have to have a really good plan in place to do that before you let Sam Bradford walk. Uh, you mentioned uh, in the article that, you know, Jeffrey Lurie made the decision to go with Bradford. I mean, obviously he had to endorse it uh, for Kelly to be able to make the move. Does that suggest that he has some ties to that move? Because Lurie doesn't really get involved with a lot of personnel decisions. But, you know, sometimes when you're tied to a guy, you feel compelled to bring him back. So does Lurie have any influence on that at all? Well, I think it has influence. I mean, he is the boss ultimately, and you know, Allie Rosen's making decisions right now, and he's not going to be making decisions that Jeff Lurie, um, you know, vehemently disagrees with because Allie Rosen is only here because Jeff Lurie um, seems to have a fond <laughs> uh, fondness for Howie that none of the rest of us fully understand. So, you know, um, Jeff Lurie is allowing Howie Rosen to make these decisions. He's probably going to go, you know. Go as far as he can reasonably to try to keep Lori happy, but uh, you know, Lori did say last year. You know, he brought up the point about um, you know having evaluated quarterbacks over the years uh, for every draft that comes out. You know, and he had Andy Reid for 14 of those years evaluating quarterbacks. And you know, again, they had Peyton Manning rated really high when he came out, and Sam Bradford was the next guy that was like at that level in terms of their evaluation process. Now that means that they didn't evaluate Aaron Rodgers, for example. <laughs> as high as Peyton Manning or Sam Bradford. So maybe their evaluation process isn't 100% accurate. But, uh, yeah, Lori will have a say in this stuff. But I think there's a, a sort of backlash against everything Chip did that kind of offsets that a little bit. So if they decide to move on, um, you know, I don't think Lori would stand in the way. And the other thing about Lori is that he always has believed that, hey, that the coach has got to have, you know, kind of his guy, you know, in, in a lot of respects. In, in a lot of personal moves, mm-hmm. you kind of really got to make the coach – feel comfortable with the quarterback position is the number one uh, in all of that. So, you know, in 1999, you know, when Andrew Reid wanted to draft Donovan McNabb, you know, they basically went with Donovan McNabb. Other people in the organization liked other quarterbacks in that draft. But the uh, lawyer really believes the coach has to have his guy at that position. If, if Peterson's convinced it's not Bradford, then Lori would probably go along with it. But if, if they don't have a better plan in place, I would imagine Lori would kind of at least advise them to stick with the guy they have. Phil, uh, you also write over at ESPN.com, uh, and of course, Eagles uh, uh, NFL Nation over at ESPN.com, Phil Sheridan, that uh, Howie Roseman being back, and that that gives the Eagles some optimism here. And, and I look, you know, people who say that the Eagles are virtually any team in the NFL, there's a handful of them, but not many that are in total or complete rebuild mode. They're all kind of just stuck in the middle. One play here, one bounce there makes you go from mediocre to good. Uh, there's not a lot of great teams. There's not a lot of awful teams, but... Uh, why is Roseman being back a reason for optimism? Yeah, well, I think the, there's a you know an obvious kind of negative feeling about Roseman uh, with a lot of fans, and I understand it. Um, you know, people look at him, and he's not the most uh, you know uh, sort of publicly likable guy. Um, you know, they haven't won a lot of things. Uh, have not won a playoff game, for example, since he became GM back in 2010. So there's a lot of reasons to kind of be down on this uh, idea of Rosen being back. But the point I was trying to make was that, you know, when he became GM at age 35 uh, in 2010, he was probably inexperienced, uh, probably, you know, underqualified for the job at that time. And he made some mistakes. The Dream Team year uh, was a big uh, example. And in 2011, when they made all those moves and made a big splash and it all fell apart on them. But, you know, in the, in the years after that, he decided he wasn't going to do that anymore, and he was going to focus more on the draft and trying to build the team the right way from the ground up. Uh, the 2012 draft that brought you Fletcher Cox and Vinny Curry and, and, you know, other good players. And the 2013 draft, um, they were also, you know, there were some pretty good uh, drafts in there those two years when Roseman was running it and he was trying to run it, uh, you know, by taking the best player available, not reaching for uh, players, they got into a bind, you know. They they, they decided they have a, had to have a guard, and Danny Watkins was the only guard that could hit in the first round that year. I mean, he you know he kind of learned from those mistakes. It seemed like and was doing things better. Um, so now that he's coming back into into power, you know, he's 40. He's not as young as he was. He's got a lot more experience. He seems to have learned from the things he did wrong 
the first time around. So it just it just seems to me that you know, based on what he did, you know, back in 2010 and 2011, yeah, that would be a guy you wouldn't want running your team. But based on the fact that he learned from those mistakes and seemed to be, you know, fixing those things and trying to do them uh, in a little more, uh, I don't know, more soundly than he had in the past, I think those things. Um, you know, suggests that there's a really good chance that Howie Roseman is not a disaster this time around. And given all that they've been through as an organization the last couple of years with Chip Kelly and all the all the changes that that went on, um, you know, it just there's a, there's a chance that he could be very good. And if, if if they stick with somebody, whether it's him or somebody else who's good, you know, you have a better chance of getting this thing you know, going in the right direction. The constant change, uh, people going in and out uh, the front office. Revolving doors, you know. Tom Can- Tom Gamble leaving, um, all the guys that have left in the past, um, from Lewis Reddick to Jason White. You know, there's, there's all these people that have left the organization over over the last few years uh, because of uh, various uh, squabbles in the front office and that kind of thing. Just getting it settled down and letting somebody run it, you know, that is the reason for some optimism. Now, it doesn't mean that Roseman will do it and will, you know, succeed at it, but at least he's got a chance to. And I, I think he, I don't think he did the first time around because he wasn't ready yet, but I think he's probably a little more ready now. All right, uh, more on the Eagles, of course, uh, is that uh, franchise tag. Phil Sheridan's got plenty more uh, on this offseason, and, of course, uh, the big decision up next is Sam Bradford. Will they get him signed long-term? Phil makes his case. Check it out over at ESPN.com. And, uh, of course, always a pleasure to catch up with Phil on the Wednesday here. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, appreciate it, Mike. Take care.